Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I am Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail and our passion is sharing that with you every week. Look, I got fresh pictures up now. Hello. I like that Hello. Good. How good are morning. you? Good. How are you guys? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries. It's all good. It's all good. We're uh, we're happy to meet you. Yes. Nice to meet you guys. Mm, so excited to do this podcast. We uh, love no, the I snacks. Love yeah, yeah. We love the snacks, and then and then love your story, and can't wait to get this to listeners. And you've you've had a you've kind of had a busy run like from before CHFA and then CHFA and then you've just had kind of like news after news after news right it's it's been uh, a lot of good stuff going on it has it's refreshing it's <laughs> I've been like lots of travel and lots of people and I will never complain about that ever again <laughs> <I'm just grateful. laughs> holy man that was a long two years oh yeah. man Oh yeah. man. <clears throat> yeah. Um, let's, uh, let's, so I'll, I'll introduce you. So we, we normally kind of like slow roll into these, but, um, kind of excited to get going. So, uh, we met, uh, Natasha and her crew at CHFA. They have been around a long time. I'm always a little extra excited when it's snacks that I have in my drawers, um, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, and so, and so, um, you know, Natasha is part of uh, three farmers. So Natasha Vandenkirk um, and uh, and, you know, so three farmers we will we'll hear from Natasha in a little bit. She they you know, since CHFA, we were just talking about um, I think you've gotten a fundraise in the middle of somewhere. Uh, you've been to a million shows, it looks like since then. And then you also just won a Made Grand Prix awards. award as well right so so kind of um like got lots and lots and lots of stuff going not that you probably had a lot of stuff going on before that as well but um anyway so we're excited to have you on we're excited to hear the story and uh that's kind of our intro so so the the next little bit is all yours we'd love to hear about your journey and how you got to where you are and uh, a little bit about three farmers as well yeah, for sure. Yeah, so thank you. So yeah. as mentioned, I'm Natasha. I'm one of the founders here at Three Farmers Foods. Um, so it's my sister and myself that run this company. And then we literally started as three farmers. It's our dad and two neighboring farmers. Um, so there is a bit of a family vibe threaded through the company. And then, of course, close neighbors uh, alongside us. So, um, so my sister's a Red Seal chef. She gets to do all the fun, creative uh, stuff in the company. She's got that creative edge to her. So she does all the product development and flavor development and that sort of thing. Um, and then I have the business background. So um, lots of strategy, um, obviously organizational design, manufacturing and ops, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, right from the get go, I guess we had complementary skill sets, which has been super helpful as we've grown this company over the last 10 years. Uh, we started in 2012 with um, an ancient oil seed called Camelina, actually. So we actually started in the um, culinary oils category in the grocery store, which taught us, I think, a lot of valuable lessons. Um, I mean, that's a tough category. It's a tough category. Yeah. Yeah. Super tough, very cluttered. <laughs> I mean, there's a million different types of oils. For sure. And, you know, consumers don't even know why they're using the oil they use, right? It's it's often just passed down from generation to generation. You use olive oil because your mom used olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't necessarily understand the differences and nuances between the different types. So lots of education there, just understanding consumer packaged goods, what it takes to educate consumers and make them aware of a new item on shelf, how important packaging is in terms of getting that initial pull off shelf. Um, and then again, just understanding the intricacies of working with retailers. And I think one of the biggest lessons learned when we were, you know, plugging away with the oil was that, you know, once that sale happens to get it onto shelf, your journey doesn't end there. That, could, that product is your responsibility until it hits that consumer's basket and even beyond that, right? Into Absolutely. 
right? And I think a lot of people don't understand that when they get into CPG, they don't understand that that responsibility is right to the last bit of consumption. Right. And um, so, yeah, it was a really valuable lesson in understanding how much support uh, needs to go behind a product and needs to go behind those retail partners to make sure that it continues to move off shelf. So yeah, that was early on, on in our journey. We did Dragon's Den. That's where we first actually met up with Arlene. And um, we, we had closed a deal on screen. It didn't close behind the scenes, but we did work with her for about a year doing different marketing efforts and really enjoyed that experience. Um, we then moved on and in 2014 decided that we needed to build the brand out. And that's when we launched into Snacks. So, you know, I'd love to say that we you know, knew exactly what was going to happen with chickpeas and that they were going to explode onto the better for you health scene. But we didn't know that. We just love chickpeas. <laughs> um, we grow a ton of them here in Saskatchewan. Um, we're one of the top five world producers of chickpeas. We're the world producer for lentils and green peas. So it made a lot of sense to add value to these beans and these legumes here at home. And that's what got us into uh, whole bean snacking. And that's what also pulled us into manufacturing. We found out that there was no co-packer in North America that could process these the way we wanted them. We wanted them minimally processed. We did not want them fried. We wanted them air, air popped. And so we ended up investing in our own proprietary roasting technology to do just that, to air pop these products and then customize our own flavor blends to how we wanted them, uh, how we wanted them to be. So fast forward, I guess it's been seven years with our snacks out in the marketplace and we're the number one uh, whole bean snack here in Canada. We are absolutely um, a foundational element in the better for you snack space. You'll see a lot of our SKUs on shelf across a lot of the mainstream retailers. And we are just starting our entry into the US market. So which feels a little bit like starting over. <laughs> Hence all the travel, right? You got to be in the market, oh, you got to yeah. be meeting the people, you got to be yeah. building those retailer relationships. So it's, it's, it's daunting, but very, very exciting. So yeah, lots of good things to come. And the U.S. is almost like different countries, right? Like every region has its own thing. So it's really like it's one country, but it's really like five regions that you're going mm -hmm. to. Or more. You know, so, so what or more, right? Like or depending more. on how uh, it, for you, actually, in the in the snack category, it might actually be more um, mm -hmm. the different taste palettes from from region to region is is uh, what they like in California. They definitely don't necessarily like on the East Coast at all. Oh, right? Christ, so. but they're like sprouts. They don't like in Whole Foods. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, like, like that country is yeah. just, a, just a bit of a gong show that way, right? It's hard to. It's hard. It's expensive too, as I'm yeah. sure you're. I'm sure it's you're very expensive. Out. Yeah, and you know what? That's one of the things <clears> that I think I'm really proud about how the strategy panned out. We put off entry into the U.S. for a very long time because mm -hmm. we wanted to build our market here in Canada and make sure that somebody framed it to me one time, just make sure you have somewhere to run home to. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we have that, that's right? A, that's we, a good plan. We, yeah. We have momentum here in Canada. We have a profitable marketplace. Um, and, and I think that's really important because I can't imagine um, investing and trying to build two countries, two markets at once. I, it's just, you just learn so much from that first experience in opening up a new marketplace. And so you can take those learnings and hopefully conserve some cash along the way. Um, well, I'm, sure, I'm sure if I know there are two distinct markets too, I don't think people really appreciate the differences. I don't think people appreciate the difference in our own country. Yeah. Yeah. Right? What, what we do on the West coast is very different than what you guys do in the prairies and mm -hmm. very different than what they do in where Phil is in the East. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like we're, 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 we're a vast country with very yeah. different yeah pockets as well and then the, again then you hit the states and yeah it's very different you know, all, yeah. all, you know, all hands i on mean deck. you mentioned palettes right like different flavor preferences across the country right and um and and so yeah you have to take all of that into account and our strategy moving into the u.s <laughs> Here in Canada, we took a regional approach even, right? We started mm -hmm. in the east and then we slowly uh, moved back west. We, we went looking for sort of the, where we could get the most bang for our buck. And quite frankly, it was early days. So where we had relatives that we could stay with. <laughs> hey, whatever free. works, right? Yeah, whatever works. Yeah. So, you know, that was our Canadian <laughs> approach. And then when we moved into the U.S., um, you know, we looked at the regional approach. But one of the things that we heard time and time again from other business owners that had done it was that it's challenging to stay regional because as soon as you land your whole foods or your sprouts they immediately you, you know you penetrate additional regions so it kind of yeah. throws that strategy out the window yeah. so we're very focused like demographically focused so we we, we focus on those key retailers um whole foods 
uh, we've presented to you. We're waiting to hear back. Um, Sprouts, we're, we're rolling out in intro stores right now. We awesome. have um, wow. distribution into HEB. So that's awesome too. You got the right yeah, people. Made- I love HEB. Yeah, no, but you're with the right retailers, right? That's that's huge. Yeah, yeah exactly. And and those influential retailers where you can sort of build yeah, out your, your story sure. and your velocities and your brand and, and then magnify it from there. So we've made a we've had really good traction. We've only been down there like 12 months, right? Presenting. Wow. You, that's that's that's, that's really huge. good. Yeah. That's really yeah. good. Are you going direct or are you using the distributor? Because I'm sure you're For- figuring that part out too. We do have some direct relationships, but mostly through distribution. Yeah. So mm-hmm. AHI and UNFI. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And we Which have is a, another beast yes. uh, on top of a beast on yes. top of a beast. And they need to be managed, right? I mean, at the end totally. of the day, they're a distributor, they move boxes, right? So you need to even like their order systems, it's all, it's all mechanized, right? Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. automated yeah. and automation is not perfect when you have no real history. So there's a For lot sure. of, um, we have an amazing team here. There's a lot of human intervention there to make sure that they're pulling in right quantities and that we're moving the right volume. Um, so and in the right distribution centers to service the right stores. I mean, that's the problem. That's the difference that people don't get yeah. mm-hmm. is that you have to land regional hubs in some, to some degree, otherwise. Yeah. Anchors. Yeah. yeah if you don't do it, you're, you're just not in that region. Like a, that's pretty much wraps it up. I mean, yeah. And I think that's where that early lesson of just when you make that sale, the responsibility does not end. And we take that very seriously here. Like when we, you know, CPOs in from KHE or UNFI, we question them. We say, okay, does this make sense? We check their inventory. And if we need, think we need to change it, we will change it. Um, So where a lot of people I think are just happy to get POs and they'll fill them without asking questions. I I think and they don't realize that it's not, it, all it all you did was you just put it in a warehouse. Yeah. There's yeah. no high five. It's good. It's, <laughs> it's actually physics, right? There's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you see yeah. a PO and you celebrate like 18 months from now, you, you got to be looking to go, oh my God. It's just, did anybody look at that like, happened, it, uh, right? Did we like, sell any of that? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, was it so in there for a day? Who did we have? Who was so that warehouse? Yeah. And I mean, if we had gone into the US early on, simultaneous to our community entry, mm-hmm. like, we would be in that shitstorm for sure, right? Like, we yeah. wouldn't mm-hmm. know. We wouldn't know. Well, they could actually bankrupt you, really, if you really think of it, because you know that, right? And, well, now yeah. you appreciate even more that it could, it, could, it bankrupts companies. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It does, because their cash is all, you know, they don't realize. I mean, it's like you said. And it's, I'm glad the way you say it because a lot of CPG people don't understand is that you really never don't own that product until it's actually finished. Yeah. Because yeah. retail yeah. consumers can bring it back half done. I don't like it. Yeah. There's not a retailer in the country who's not going to take it back. Yeah. Right. And guess who's going to get the debit? Exactly. At full pop. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you're kind of thinking, well, shit, man, I sold this like a year ago. Yeah. Well, not our problem. Yeah, absolutely. I know right? uh, the taking responsibility for that is so important. And, and, and then knowing that also informs your strategy. One thing, I, I think a lot of people have short-term goals when it comes to, to building a brand in this space, right? There's been so many big exits and there's been so much yeah. hype around that. That's a, it's a bad mindset to get into because then you stop thinking about improving your product, right? You stop thinking about improving that customer experience because everything is just short term, right? Oh, I just need to make mm-hmm. it through tomorrow. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then it's not my problem anymore. Well, mm-hmm. Phil and I've talked ad nauseum about that because like to your point is that it's not even that, you know, we've had a few really big wins in the country and mm-hmm. so has the States. Yeah. But they're like lottery tickets, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, 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 the big hundred million, 200, 500 million exits, they happen, but you know, they're one in a million. Yeah. Like there's yeah. a lot of people that lost homes and families and all the stuff behind them because they were to oh. your point, you're chasing the wrong dream. I mean, so let me go, let's go back to your dream in a second though. So you mm-hmm. went from oil mm-hmm. and then into, did you go into the chickpeas because of, I mean, I know outside of the fact that you guys grow them and you like them, like, you, you know, you started something. Why though? Like, what, cause there really wasn't probably much. Can, can we, that can we go point. even one step back? Like, so, so your dad and the two neighboring farms, was it always in the plan? Like to clearly Kenny and I are not farmers. So we have no mm-hmm. idea how this model works. Like was the idea always to get into, cause I, I feel like it's unusual for, for farmers, no disrespect to get into retail mm-hmm. uh, and make a product like, well, I was even going to skip the I, oil I, would assume, I don't even know what the oil is. I'm thinking, like, yeah, okay, yeah, like, but, it, why but would I you just think wonder. It, I just wonder why, right? Like, I wonder why. Why yeah. not stick to the model of I make it, 
I Grow sell it, it, sell I, it, I ship it out. Next. Somebody else, yeah. you know, kind of deals with it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that model is coming home to roost right now, right? Like, look at the world we're in, right? And so, but to, to back to your question um, about sort of the origin story, certainly like I grew up on a farm. My dad's a farmer. My brothers are farmers. Mm -hmm. Farming is like deep in my blood. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, and so I think that it's often most farmers dream to like walk into a retail store and know that's my bag of product. Right. Or I like, that's my brand. I right. grew that. I added value to that. It's now sitting on the retailer shelf and I, I can trace that journey, mm -hmm. but few do it because to your point, it's a completely different set of core competencies, right? Like, I mean, it's farmers, a world. Like, they're a jack of all trades. They, yeah. they are out in the field. They love being in nature. They, they don't necessarily want to deal with a bunch of people every day in a, but like mm -hmm. they want to, they want to have their marketers food. They want to grow their food. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Marketing. Like, who, wants right? To deal with the, who wants to deal with a retailer? Who wants who to deal want, with right? like, like, seriously, even, come on. And even understanding that world. Oh my right? God. Yeah. So it's, it's just, so foreign to them. I think that leap is just too great. And I think that's why we don't see more mm. primary producers, farmers, mm -hmm. um, actually involved with the end uh, consumer or the retailers for that matter. So hence, you know, my sister and I sort of jumping in and filling that gap. And I mean, at the end of the day, like, let's face it, we had no idea what we were getting into, like none. Right. Um, and so we've just sort of fumbled around and figured it out as we went. And we're just mm. so lucky that we had three farmers that honestly believed in us when probably nobody else would have, right? They stuck around and they believed in this vision of taking product to market in a more direct and transparent way. And now today, I think that's one of our strengths. Like really what CPG brand do you know that actually has farmers as the founders and, and shareholders, right? That doesn't happen anymore. It's so disconnected and everybody is so focused on, and even a brand that manufactures this co-packer model that took over over mm -hmm. the last 10 years, because nobody wanted to invest in infrastructure. But here we are, right, in this supply chain crisis where we need infrastructure in Canada. We need food security. We need to be processing goods here at home. We can't yeah. just be growing and shipping these commodities. But that's what we do. We're Canadians. We dig right. it out of the ground. We ship minerals. We cut trees down. We ship them. We grow yeah. wheat. We ship it. Like, we don't... We don't do a lot of our own stuff. We send yeah. it to somebody else and buy it. Oh, it's done. Yes, exactly. But then we gave all that value to somebody exactly. else. And the reason mm -hmm. they did it is because of, I was listening to another discussion the other day around efficiencies. We do that because it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. It's lower cost. We mm -hmm. can do it cheaper somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But there are consequences to that. 100%. Yeah. Look, yeah. look at the mess we're in. Yeah. Totally. Right. It's so, not rocket science, right? I mean, it, it's not, but you know, we always have to like bear the consequences before we learn, it seems. Right. Well, so, I guess that's yeah. sometimes unfortunate how you learn. Yeah. You know, you yeah. learn how to ride a bike by, by banging. It's always how we scratching learn. It's not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a painful We're just journey. not. Well, we're because I, not I think that. that's how humans yeah. do it. I don't yeah, think we yeah, get yeah. it. I mean, every improvement we get in automobiles or airlines is because of something tragic. Some catastrophic. You know, we're going to be, yeah. we're going to have yeah. some manufacturing come back into our country. We got a vaccine plant coming back. Why mm -hmm. do we ever leave it? Right. Exactly. Right. You know, what was the motivate? Well, what was the big deal? Why didn't we just stick around with some of these things? We do have a population. I know it's not huge, but. So yeah. do you grow wheat? I feel like we need So where are you exactly? Are you in Saskatoon? <laughs> are you in yeah. yeah, so we're located in Saskatoon. We're actually okay. just starting a manufacturing expansion here in Saskatoon. So we're growing from uh, like 4,000 square feet to 28,000 square feet. Right? And the farms are close to Saskatoon? And the or... farms are just four hours south of here. So down actually. Um... I love how, I love for prairie people that just four hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have no traffic. It's, just quick, just it's the next driving. neighbor. Yeah. It's the next neighbor. <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal to drive four hours around here. No, um, but, so, but, yes, but they it's grow legit down. though, right? Because four hours for me in Toronto, that's like three blocks away. And then four hours for Kenny in Vancouver is Ugh. across town, maybe. Like, maybe. so yours is a true four hours. Is like you're a four hours, like, you know, like, like literally yeah, as the crow hours. flies. Yeah. Like, yeah. you yeah. better. Sorry. Anyway, just like oh, wow. 400 kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> and that is literally the next neighbor. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's Bob. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. We just brought our team in. So half our team is in Toronto mm -hmm. and then um, we have like some team in Manitoba and now in mm -hmm. Vancouver. So we bring them in annually to do farm tours. So they get to come and ride in the combine. And this year it was in the Cedar How cool is that? and like experience just 
How cool it is that? dark cool. in the prairies. Yeah. It is dark in the prairies. There is not a well, there's not light. Yeah. There is just crickets and darkness. And, and sky, though. At least you can see stars. Yeah, you can see right? stars, right? It's beautiful. But yeah, it's just a different experience for them. But to answer your question, we grow a ton of things here in the prairies. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes um, prairie air- agriculture really unique as well. We don't just, in the US, it's like soy and corn. Here in the prairies, we grow tons of beans. So, right. So, but I didn't like, even know that. And I'm Canadian. Animals. Like, I didn't realize we were such a big producer of chickpea, no, green bean. No idea. I honestly I didn't yeah. know that. I would it assume is- we grow it, mm-hmm. but not to. I mean, I don't even think we all appreciate how big Ukraine was until this right. mess, right? You don't realize, I didn't realize in Canada, we were number one in all these. Absolutely. All these, I'm still trying to figure out even like go back, like, so did, did, did your dads do the oil thing or was that with, with when you guys came in and helped? They start, they came up with the idea and there's a big push. Like camelina oil is highly unsaturated. It's a really healthy oil, but it also makes it good for biodiesel um, mm. production. So okay. alternative yeah. fuels. And okay. so that was initially their thought. Um, and then they brought us on to sort of understand what other avenues we could take this oil. And that's when we ended up taking it down the culinary path because it's really unique. It has, it's high in omega-3, so it's healthy like flax, but you can cook with it. It's very stable. So it has a 475 smoke point. So it's- So it's like high heat. Yeah. Wow. It's functional in the kitchen. Oh, I didn't, okay. It's, again, see, I that, see that, that. you know, again, you're, yeah. you, you picked, you picked a, a category that's massively saturated. Mm-hmm. And then one, you know, you pick an oil that I'm looking at, I think I have no idea what the hell this oil is. I know it's mm-hmm. crazy, right? And but I got know. a feeling, I saw this when I was buying at London Drugs. I had this thing in my head that someone pitched this to me prior to me exiting LD. Okay. And Tasha's yeah. like, it's- that was me, you jerk. <laughs> Probably. And then you, didn't- <laughs> I'm kind of, you know what? i am kind of got it in my head that I did meet either the owners or, or of, of some oil. I, I, you I, probably I, did. Yes. Yeah. London would drugs you, is a, oh, a great this is awkward. Now. Would your dad have gone? Like, would it now I kind of want to go to my inbox and then see your name. It's probably like me uh, pounding you with emails. For I'm dead yeah, serious. Natasha's I like, remember. this podcast is off. We are I, done. I, you didn't <laughs> no, you can't list that. me that. I'm half an hour in. I, hey, I didn't drop that at the beginning, Phil. I'm not that stupid. Because yeah, I'm thinking cool. as I'm looking, I'm thinking, geez, I don't know. I mean, I kind of remember meeting somebody that came in and, and mm-hmm. it was one of those things where I, think, I looked at, I thought, I don't know what the hell this is. Like, I mean, I'm yeah. buying oils and it's too small, but it's really cool. But yeah. Oh my gosh. That probably was, well, that probably okay, dig it up. Happen. Hopefully I was really nice. Cause I generally wasn't that mean. Yeah, no, we never hold it against buyers, even if they are mean. We get the job. It's stressful and it's hard and you get like five. That's not that bad. No, don't, 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 don't cut that much slack. It's not that bad. Yeah. There's no reason to be mean. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's hilarious. So, so yeah, the oil was, but what's interesting is when people tried it, like you could just see their eyes light. It was, it's just an amazing product, right? Mm. But so, and it's still around. We treat it, it's, it's a bit more opportunistically. We don't put a mm-hmm. ton of dollars uh, behind mm-hmm. it, but it's now, uh, you mentioned Ukraine. Well, I mean, now we're oil, short of oil. Yeah, there's a huge shortage of oil. Huge. I mean, we see it even in our snacks because Huge. we use oil to bind the seasoning. Thank For God sure. we don't fry. So we're mm-hmm. using like a fraction right, of what right. a lot of snack food companies would use. And you strain but... it, which is, you know, a whole different product. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you just... And right now in supply chain, it's kind of like what next, right? You're just waiting for the next. Uh, it's it's all going to drop sooner. Yeah. Something, every, every day is something. Yeah, I mean. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's so a insanity. lot of brands. It's an interesting time to be in food. For well, I mean, That's to be in sure. industry, but certainly in food. Definitely in food. I'm, you know, I don't think people appreciate how how interesting it is to be in food at this particular time, unless yeah. you're actually in it. Yeah, exactly. So, so go back to so again. I, I'm still trying to understand. I, I, I barely understand the, the move to oil, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's you know sometimes a little slow. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, okay, but so then you know, there, so there really wasn't a large market, uh, uh, you know, ten years ago snacks always been huge obviously but yeah. you know 10 years ago i don't remember seeing the whole market going crazy with you know fava beans mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know chickpeas yeah. i know was starting you know was getting more popular because we were looking for other sources of protein and and yeah. things like that but like why like what you know you're into white space i would assume in, in essence 
Yeah. And I mean, there was a lot, there was <laughs> certainly several failures before we landed on like ready to eat chickpeas. I mean, we tried a hummus mm. product, which was a disaster. Um, oh. and, <laughs> but we made a great hummus chickpeas and that camelina oil make an unbelievable hummus. I bet. We thought, well, this yeah. is a great idea, but we yeah. never really thought through the logistics and the shelf life issues. That's and, a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. Fresh so, is fresh is tough. Yeah. Fresh is super tough. So we abandoned <clears throat> that. Um, and then we, when we landed on chickpeas, the, the whole concept came from looking at other cultures to say, okay, these cultures are snacking on these products all the time. They're highly nutritious. We grow a ton of them here in Saskatchewan. Why are we not like, why have these not penetrated mainstream <clears throat> North American right. culture, right? Mm-hmm. Like, why are these not sitting on the, sh- on the shelf to snack on They're They're better than nuts. They're allergen free, right? We have a huge allergen situation in, in this world, right? School, peanut free, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of how the concept was born was just sort of looking at, um, other cultures and what they typically snack on and, and yeah. And then asking ourselves, well, what can we do to, you know, reach the everyday North American consumer with these products? How do they need to be produced? How do they need to be packaged? What kind of call outs do we need on them? What are these consumers actually looking for? And, and so we, we launched with our first chickpeas, um, in 2014, and it was really about, um, like back then plant-based didn't mean much, of course, no. but it was mm-hmm. about high protein, high fiber, <clears throat> and just healthy snacking, clean, clean ingredients, um, as minimal, uh, ingredient list as possible. And chickpeas just went crazy. And so the other great thing about that is in the snack set, you do get that impulse purchase. It's a low barrier to entry, right? Sure. If you can get the product on shelf, if it's a trending product, you are going to get that natural pickup and you're going right. to start with uh, the base velocities that please the buyer, that get you more face time, which helps you grow, right? Um, and so that's what the chickpeas did for us. And then from there, we've just similarly continued to launch um, pulses that are roasted in a similar way. They all have their own nuances, but you know, we invested in manufacturing. We want to leverage that manufacturing and, and that's led to our lentils and, and now our fava beans, which very cool. I think every item like chickpeas are still quite niche. They're fairly dry. Um, they're very beany. So there's a certain consumer right. demographic that gravitates to chickpeas. Whereas the favas that we just launched that we just won that retail council award with, mm-hmm. they have the legs to go. They're really screen. tasty. They're super tasty. Yeah. They're not as dry. They snack yeah. like a corn nut. Yeah. The, the, the seasonings are all like non-GMO allergen free. They're super clean, but they taste like conventional seasoning. Right. And that's what consumers really like. Some of them have a bad taste in their mouth from previous healthy snacks they've tried. Sure. And our whole goal here is to say, we don't believe just those people that shop the natural foods aisle or that can afford expensive, healthy snacks deserve to eat healthy. We believe everybody deserves to eat healthy and that they absolutely would choose these items if they tasted good. And that's really our goal is to get out of that, na- that niche set and take these products mainstream and really build um, a following for healthy bean snacks. I think. How are you finding that though? So how is, you, you're getting listings, you're, you're going into the state. So obviously yeah, you're getting traction. Yeah. Definitely getting traction. I mean, what I love is when we, um, when we're, you know, at a show and somebody comes up and says, well, I don't like, I don't like beans, right? I don't like healthy snacks. I'm more of a conventional snacker. Just try them, just try them. And sure enough, they're like, wow, I would actually eat these and and they purchase, right? It's, and that, that is with the fava beans. They have the legs to go mainstream like that and to convert consumers to a different way of thinking for sure. Not all healthy food tastes bad. You can absolutely eat healthy and not have to sacrifice on taste. And that that's really the goal here. And different cultures um, will get it too. Like fava beans, like Italians eat fava beans. It's not totally. I mean, I yeah. would never think to eat them this way to be honest. Asians don't eat fava beans. But once we try, I just I, didn't funny. tell the kids what it was. No, just, yeah, they don't need to know yeah. what, what's the difference. No, no. I just fa- put them out on the table and like, they were gone. Right. Like, you know, yeah. but, but when I brought out the package, they were all like, mm. I know, right? Because they Beans? just make like, assumptions. Oh, you know, yeah. and you're like, all but right, to be fine. honest with you. you know, but as soon as I put it in a bowl, good. they were gone. Like they, yeah. you know, yeah. Because remember, like when we went to the <clears> show, Patrick asked us to go to, <clears> like he actually dragged <throat> us down, right? To to, <clears> to, to to see you. Not dragged in that way, but you got to see, I'm thinking, like, I know a lot of things. I was, Phil was a buyer. I was a buyer. Yeah, it's another snack. I mean, I get it. Yeah. It's another yeah. season snack. Wow, that's, you know, I mean, there's not like there's a shortage of them. And then you get there and you think, holy shit, man, these are actually really good. 
Yeah. And then, you know, then you're a Canadian and then, and then you get proud of, you know, like it gets, you know, all these emotions, like it's the actually a very, very good product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's our challenge is getting past that initial, like, mm-hmm. eh, I'm not going to like them. Right. Yeah. I'm not gonna or, you know what? Them. Or so whatever. It's not even, yeah. I might like them, but really, I mean, there's 50,000 snacks. Do I really care? Yeah. Yeah. Like, do and I need something annoying. new right now? Yeah. That's the noise that we need to cut through. For sure. And in this other salty snacks category that we play in, we see it in the U S too. Like it's, I was actually just reflecting on this in the U S versus Canada, what's on shelf. Like in the U S you walk down there, Holy man, it is just like the whole food set or the sprouts. It is all like kale chips, cauliflower bites, and like three different brands of them. And you're, I'm thinking they're not good either. No, well, and there's Sorry. no value there, right? It's when not even you, three. There's yeah. like 30 sometimes. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, like if you walk the same thinking, okay, I mean, I know we all know kale chips are, are, they were trending. I don't know if they are now. They're big, but do you need more than two guys? I know. Like, I really? Know. Like, I do you want really some variety? Surprised. So I was no, like, it's different. like either a lack of innovation or I was just mind boggled by it. And, and that's so our, our strategy mm-hmm. into the U S again, we don't need another chickpea down there. They've got three brands of chickpeas, mm-hmm. right. That are all scrambling and fighting for shelf mm-hmm. space. Right. Our value add is to say, guys, this is revenue and category growth over and above your basic chickpeas. Right. So when we launched our lentils and now our fava's here in Canada, we have not seen cannibalization. We've actually seen over and above. You should get incremental. Wow. Yeah, it's all incremental. You right? should. So they're they, different, they they're actually different get products. It. Different no, no, products. But, but Canadians are different. Though, Philip. Canadian buyers actually get it quicker than the U.S. buyers. Mm-hmm. I'm serious. And maybe because we've had to in our country. We don't have, first off, they've got 10 times the variety and selection of, of products in general. Isn't that, isn't that unique? Like, it's, look, so if you look at salty snacks in your household, there's probably only so, like, how many... You know what I mean? Like if I use chips, right? Like most people's nuts and chips. How many, how many mm-hmm. bags of chips do you have? Maybe three, maybe four, right? Like depending yeah. on how many children you have in the house, well, right? Yeah. But but you don't <laughs> normally go beyond that, right? Like in your in your shopping basket, you go, I'm buying three. So I'm mm-hmm. gonna look for the combo, I'm gonna get three for ten or whatever the number is, and then that's the bags, right? When we're done those, then I'll go back and get more. So the fact that you've now you know, that there's no cannibalization says that they actually recognize that it's a new snack category and they've added, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, so three salty products, you've added a fourth, which is, I think unique. Like, I don't know how many brands know, would be able to what, say that right now. Yeah. And that's what we experience. <clears throat> and they all mm-hmm. snack a little different, I think, but mm-hmm. also they all target sort of a different person in the household. Mm-hmm. Like, whereas the chickpeas would appeal to uh, pr- probably like the mom in the household um, the favas are certainly more like kid-friendly snacks, mm-hmm. right? Big crunch, certainly um, husband-friendly snacks. Uh, we also find that the lentils really appeal to the male in the household as well. So we're sort of figuring out those demographics, right? Um, and, and how to speak to them specifically mm-hmm. so that we continue this momentum. So I think there's different the snacks too, Natasha. I think the beauty of what, what your, your products specifically is that, you know, like if you have a potato chip, it doesn't leave sort of the uh, the coffee table if people are over. Mm-hmm. Like it rarely ever transitions to the table, the main table, right? right? Nuts yeah. rarely transition to the main table. Maybe in a European home, if you have the cheese at the end, if you do that, they may cross over. But it's funny because your stuff can actually reside on both tables to some degree, right? Because right. they're crunchy and they can be added to different things too. Like if you wanted to, you can throw them on a salad, you can do... We, yes. we have peanuts, a peanut. You, you, there's only so much you can be able to do with it. Yeah. And you put a peanut on, on, on the main table, people are going to look at you think, what the hell are you doing? You don't, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, I just no, think I agree. Your a little we different. do tons of like, like, especially the lentils, salad toppers. For um, sure. Yeah. They belong in so many different applications, yeah. right? And so many different occasions. We've had a ton of interest from airlines recently. Mm. Um, well, looking mm-hmm. for nut free. Looking for <clears> nut free, right? And something different, but that exactly. Instead of stupid humor. pretzels. Oh, my God. Oh, I know. I'm done with I don't pretzels. want another pretzel. Um, one of the things <laughs> that like we pretzels. do with our lentils <laughs> is on tacos, we'll throw the garlic and herb lentils mm. on top. Of tacos. You said they're like extra crunch, like, right? Like that a soft taco, a little bit of lentils, like because the kids used to stuff Doritos. Yes, and... <laughs> yeah. You're like, stop that. That's yeah. bad for you, right? So, and they're like, oh, you know, and I started putting them in and they loved them. So, anyway. 
Yeah. But, and there's an education piece there because most <clears> people <throat> don't think of that, right? You yeah. kind of have to plant the idea. Yeah. And that's one of our strategies as well is this, because we're a manufacturer, we get to uh, play into the ingredient space. So we mm. do sell bulk ingredient and we right. have, wow, like since 2020, the turn of the year, just so much interest in our products and inclusion in trail mixes. People are looking for something yeah. different other than sure. nuts, right? Salad yeah. toppers. Um, we're playing with like a vegan bacon salad mm-hmm. topper like how delicious right um so so we're seeing a lot of interest there and it's a great way of educating consumers because they start seeing these <clears throat> items pop up in all of their everyday items and that sort of recall and recognition is just so important when we're building out a new category that's very cool so, so, yeah. very you keep saying, so like in saskatoon or close to saskatoon you actually went out you guys bought the building or have a building and you actually bought machinery equipment. Like you're actually, you're vertical doing right it. now. Yeah. yeah so we're from, doing from, it. from pops farm and neighbor's yeah. farm to. Yeah. You so and- when, so we first did our, um, our first manufacturing facility was in 2018 when we custom made these ovens. And what was interesting is we actually couldn't really test the product on the ovens because it was a prototype oven. And so Mm -hmm. we couldn't actually do a full on production run to say, what is the output that we're gonna get? Mm. What is the final texture we're gonna get? What does this look like? So there was a lot of just engineering guessing going on, I suppose. It's pretty ballsy, like you're going on- Very ballsy. It's like like building a rocket ship. Oh, you have really no good. idea until you actually start, want see what happens. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So my sister, Red Seal <laughs> Chef, and my dad, farmer, just flew down to the U.S., met some engineers at a well-known um, equipment manufacturer and designed Still that, though. right? Wow. And so here we are. So when we hauled that thing in in 2018, I remember commissioning for you the look first so four calm. Days. Oh, for the first four days, we couldn't even get like acceptable product. We couldn't even burn the product. We were like, oh my God, we're going under. This is never going to work. We've totally miscalculated here. We're done. Right. But on like, it was day seven, we finally started turning out some acceptable product. We're like, okay, we're going to get there. Right. We're going to make this work. So that was back in 2018. We've now Mm -hmm. sort of fine tuned the process Mm -hmm. across all of the different products. Of course, it's a different recipe across the products. And now here we are, it's time to take that next step. So we have an investor, like we have a number of investors. Mm. Um, one of them has a real estate division. So we've located the building. Mm. Um, the negotiations have been go- ongoing for like five months. So it is supposed to close any day now. Um, we've already have the design layout ready to go, permits, awesome. submissions ready to go. So we and you're staying, five. you're staying in, in Saskatchewan, you're staying in. We are staying in Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah. So we are close to the source it makes a lot of sense makes more sense yeah yeah i mean some people would say we're at a disadvantage from a logistics perspective but for us i mean canada yeah i mean like everywhere we're we're disadvantaged everywhere we go in canada there's like four cities well and then i know where you are you're you're in the middle of the country plus there's train everywhere man we we, we took care of that 100 years ago yeah great access down through the u.s right i feel like it's pretty central it's all good Yeah. So, and why not in Saskatchewan, right? I mean, we've got a great operational labor pool here. Uh, We do a lot of- You get it. Yeah. Like we get the operation side, right? And uh, now with this very welcoming remote world we're in, we can source all the sales and marketing talent we need from afar. So- Absolutely. I know. It's awesome. Yeah. Plus it's nice to keep keep it in the province. Yeah, exactly. And right. that was one of the that was one of the goals when we started this company mm-hmm. was to bring manufacturing, food manufacturing, home right. to Saskatchewan and to keep mm-hmm. it here. So um, so we're certainly fulfilling that goal and super proud of it. I think it's awesome. I do. Yeah, so we're kind of closing our eyes and jumping right now and gonna figure it out. So it's like really like building out a whole new because even with our current manufacturing, we contract the labor in. We have an amazing partner that we do that with. Um and so we've never really been truly responsible for all of that in-house. So uh, it's going to be- That adds a whole new dimension too, eh? It totally does. Yeah. So we're excited and it's and, and we're in a weird labor market right now too. So we're battling that, um, which is changing daily. So- Yeah, or, yeah just, by the minute, literally. Yeah, by the minute. So, but yeah. I th- actually think, so it's one of those things where of all the places in the world, you are very well suited for the labor market. Like mm-hmm. you, you, one, you retain local talent, you know, because anyone who's local is going to want to, you know, if they can work local, they're going to want to work local. Right. And like, so you've just increased the opportunities in your province <clears throat> by X factor. Right. And mm-hmm. then the second thing that you don't have to battle that 
you know, folks in Toronto or folks in Vancouver, right? And your folks that are in both, you'll hear constantly is, you know, like rent just went up another 30%, you know, like what you pay me, like I live in a cardboard box, you know, blah, 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 right? Come to Saskatchewan. It's yeah. pretty, it's pretty affordable. Well, you can get a one bedroom you. in Vancouver for like 2,500 you know, bucks a like month, 3,000 a month. There's a great big room above yeah. my dad's barn you can have like, yeah, totally. like, yeah. you want to live like a rustic right? lifestyle yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no I think we are well positioned for that actually and one yeah, of the again sure. we're unique in this space too like there aren't a lot of food manufacturing or consumer packaged goods company as forward facing as us so mm -hmm. I think that helps attract uh people yeah, 100%. In, inwards 100%. it's mostly just it's the, the wages can be challenging because we're in a very commodity mining yeah. central field and they're booming yeah. right now. Right. Yeah. So, uh, um, okay. competing with that level of compensation can be really mm. challenging for a food brand. Hopefully but again, what the people different. will look at those, you got long-term play with you guys. Exactly. I mean, all this, all this, um, natural resource hit that we're all getting right now, like Canada wide with pipelines being built, et cetera. It's yeah. great, but it's a short term. Yeah, boom and like bust. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's gonna it, and it, that's exactly how it goes. With something like this, you've got good odds of of sticking because uh, to your, I guess I'm assuming like yeah, what? How many SKUs now? Nine. Is yeah, three, I mean, with all three? formats in and such, we'd be probably twenty plus. Yeah. But we you know, know what I mean. But you've got a chance yeah. to expand, move, yeah. play. Like you can, mm -hmm. you can, you can have some fun with this, right? Yeah, and so much learning opportunities too. Like food manufacturing is awesome, and food in general is awesome. Like it the is, whole right? everything oh food's awesome. And yeah. there's so great much category, opportunity yeah. for automation oh, and things differently. And yeah, so I think it's just a really exciting time to be jumping into the food world. Or do you get much support from um, from the municipal and the provincial government? I'm we assuming do. Saskatchewan, the government's pretty thrilled to have people very um, sticking. Yeah, value added egg is a huge mm. mandate for them. So we've been very fortunate um, to have a lot of government support, like Western Economic Diversification out here, IRAP, mm -hmm. so National Research Council has been mm -hmm. so supportive over the years. Um, Saskatchewan AgriValue, like honestly, probably not doable without those organizations. Well, I think that's what, why, why I'm asking, because I think people who are listening, especially if they're in Saskatchewan or Manitoba or that part of Alberta, like we're, yeah. you know, a lot of people want to, for whatever reason, they want to go to the city, you, you know, you, you can stick, if you come up with an idea, like you could do some stuff like that, you'll get backed. Yeah. I mean, you have to have an idea and, you know, you, you know, I'm, I'm, you as, as you, I'm sure you've model, learned, right? But you've you also have learned that model. Not an idea. you've had seen a lot of people <laughs> with great ideas who've gone nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like it's yeah. again, this is not, you know, you don't go into yeah. this because you want to make billions and you're going to sell it for $8 trillion. I mean, you can do that, but that's really a piss poor way to go into this. Like you have to have. A yeah. That's a bad you know, mind frame. Like this is just like, <laughs> you got to be ready to just it's a grind. work and pivot yeah. and learn as fast yeah. as possible. Yeah. And you got to enjoy the ride because otherwise this would be really, really this, painful yeah. for a lot of people. Right. But if you enjoy that kind of thing, you like, you know, pushing yourself and learning and doing something different every single day, then this might be the life for you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. This I mean, is, uh, this is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just love the Canadian. I, I, yeah. I like, I like when we do something I like. Mm -hmm. I think I, it's so important. Like, yeah, it's so we don't important. do enough of it. <clears throat> Yeah. I know. And I don't, yeah. I think we, because we play it safe, too safe sometimes. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it's just built into our, our psyche, right? Yeah. Yeah. And these, yeah, these are hard things and yeah, that can scare a lot of people. But it's not though, if you think, but especially, you know, like maybe, I don't know, I was going to say maybe in the cities there, like if you think, like I'm thinking like farmers by virtue, it's, it's all risk. Mm -hmm. Like you've got no, what do you have control over? Yeah. Who the hell knows what's going to do? Not the most important do. thing, which is weather. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. We get heat domes, no heat domes, rain, no rain. Like any given Sunday, like you don't know what the hell's going on. Like yet really, there's no control. Like you can, yeah. if you get a good run, you can kill it. But you know, if you get a drought summer or a wet, wet summer, like you're, now what? Yeah. And I think people don't understand, like I didn't even understand that. <laughs> I grew up on a farm and I didn't fully understand that mm. until I started you know, running three farmers and really starting to understand what farmers are up against all the time. And that is one of our dreams is to, to do more of that sort of touring. Like we bring our team out every year. I think it's like how many people never step foot on a farm in their life? Most Canadians. Most. most. 
That's Truly. The, and yet yeah, most of us live in the city. <clears throat> need yeah. food three times a day, yeah, often yeah, more yeah. than that, right? Yeah. No clue. Like no clue how the supply chain works. None of it. And it's I don't think it's because they're uninterested. I think it's just because they weren't they weren't given the opportunity. Yeah, but Natasha, no. I live in East Vancouver yeah. right now. Where am I gonna go? Yeah, exactly. Right. No, yeah. Like, no I don't have farms, but, but I, I don't farms, think, but but I don't even think that Canadians really know what a real farm looks like. Like I, I would venture that like most of your population knows what an orchard looks like, right? Because, you know, fruit picking is accessible. And so you kind of go, well, that's a farm, right? And you realize that's not a farm. No, like it's, <laughs> that's an orchard. It's, 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 not, orchard. it's not even the same thing. Like it's and in not our even province, close, that right? was like, an orchard. Now it's a vineyard. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's not a, it's not even an orchard anymore. But a vineyard is also not the same thing, right? No. Like it's just not it's anyway. The sheer scale I, I think it's, that I think yeah. it's so interesting. Like, you know, yeah. even in this, it's funny too, because when we're like going to buy a piece of machinery for the operation, it mm -hmm. saves a million dollars for the oven. Mm -hmm. Our farmers are kind of like, What's the big deal? Right. They spend, you know, three well, million a combine, bucks a combine every year, exactly. right? Like it's the scale of which they operate is unbelievable right, right? Um, and the technology too technology has changed farming in so many ways for the better and i think consumers aren't aware of that too like how how many advancements there have been from an environmental perspective direct sure. feeding um all of the intercropping that's done right so mimicking nature more mm -hmm. than one like one crop in a field mm -hmm. right cover crops there's just so many yeah cool less fertilizer putting different things in to help that really part of it like it's all so many stuff. sustainable efforts. So anyways, our goal would be someday to do like multiple tours a year of retail partners. We've done that already, but also, um, but also just consumers, right? Like running contests. And Might be a cool contest win, you know, come to the farm for a week. Yeah, I think it's amazing. But of course I, I think it's amazing because I grew up there and I love it. I think, I a think lot it's of, amazing. I, I don't, don't kid yourself. I think there's yeah. a lot more people. I think especially we're, we just started the mess we're in. Like we've got another 18 to 36 months of, of this. I don't think people appreciate how bad this is going to get. Yeah. So I think once we start really getting into the, the shit show that's coming, I, I think people will really start to appreciate why it's not the worst idea to plant some of your own tomatoes, maybe in the backyard mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or some of your own greens or appreciate the fact that, you know, by virtue of absolute awesome luck, we're in a country that can grow a lot of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Like and, I said I think that we start... whole thing. I've just like, I'm like, I am so glad I know farmers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, but it's just by birth. It's not like, we, you know, it's not like we had any great, you know, luckily our parents all decided to come to this country. I mean, we could have been anywhere. Yeah. It's not the, uh, yes. could just, not the worst place. To I be. was laughing about it last year. Cause um, you know, I've been planting. I love planting. I'm not any good at it. I plant them. I water them. That's and then like, hope they grow. Yeah, 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 kind of. Um, Isn't you that know, for me? But, but I, no. <laughs> Not a lot. No, 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 no. So please, you got to like, watch the video. Grow, please like, grow, So So Colin, <laughs> Colin Rosengren, right? Yes. The, yeah. One of the farmers. Yeah. Like in the video, he like scoops some soil and he's like, oh yeah, you can smell it. It's still active. I'm like, what's active? In what? What are you talking about? Like, what? Yeah. I don't even know what I'm smelling. But so I grew snow peas, right? But I grew like three plants, right? So I have a family of five, right? So you're like, okay, so I got two snow peas today. I get two tomorrow. <laughs> Right. You're like, what I, I actually have to go to the store right? like, and supplement. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you know what? But that's you know, how you like, learn. So you know what you learn? Yeah, yeah, Can you yeah. imagine how many snow peas you have to grow? just for your house no no right. that's exactly the that's right? exactly the right like even spinach right peas. you're kind of like okay i'm gonna grow enough spinach i i got a half dozen spinach plants and you're going this is enough for one of us like i don't know what the rest of you are gonna do but like <laughs> right. one of us can have spinach like that's it right and that's like if you go on a diet you just conserve you one of us can have spinach once a week and god knows what happens in the winter <laughs> Cause I didn't make that much. Right. Like I just don't like, so I, I think all of those things like scale is it's amazing. Right. Cause you just, just don't, don't appreciate it. Right. I mean, like, because we it's out of our yeah, system. Yeah. I mean, most yeah. of us well, are and, urban. Yeah. And, and seeing is believing, right. That's why I just think it's mm -hmm. so important. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, even teaching it in school. Right. Mm -hmm. We have egg in the classroom here throughout the prairies. I think they have mm -hmm. it out East and out West as well, where kids do learn about uh, some of these things. Yeah. Cause Again, just food. It's food, right? Yeah. We take it for granted, though. You know what we're yeah. like, though, because what do we have to, when do we worry about food in Canada? Yeah. Really? Yeah. This year. The, next this year. This, this the next little <clears throat> bit. We're all, the I next few we're years. Be, but yeah. again, remember, we're still in the part of the world that no matter what, because we have money, we will have the food. I know. Not maybe as much as we've had, 
but there's a lot of other places in this country or the world that aren't going to have the food. I don't, I, I think people really will start to appreciate how much we really need to take care of. Yeah. Like, especially the prairies, because in our country, you guys crank out a lot of food. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't care if it's plant-based, animal-based. Like, I don't I think you need to, to change your phone one, number, but... Natasha. Like, <laughs> I think later this year when all the wheat shortages start hitting, people are going to be like, Hey, uh, Natasha, you, you got it. Like you got a little you bit of free thing. farmers lady. I'm going to call her slide, up. Yeah. Slide me some wheat, you know, just you know? a couple of bags, <laughs> a couple of bags. <laughs> and if you don't mind, you know, grind the grind the grind the just this level. I'll just swing by and grab some, you know, no, 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 yeah. no. <laughs> just a midnight run. Yeah, I think there, I think you're right though. I think there's going to be a huge mindset shift around, uh, yeah. just food. Right. And I think yeah. like store shelves being empty, that's scary. Mm -hmm. That, mm -hmm. especially for people that you know might not have thought further than that store shelf like mm -hmm. what's behind that store shelf yeah, what is yeah. that system and what does it look like and, yeah. and do i need to be more involved in it or do i need to understand it more do yeah I, yeah so that i can well, I think we've all learned that part i mean some yeah. of us because we were in food already kind of mm -hmm. maybe appreciate it to some degree a little more but um yeah it's gonna be an interesting time yeah, this, this has been be this has been so fascinating Thank i think it's really so cool i mean first off your product's very good yeah um love the canadian prairie play i mean it's awesome oh well thank you and it's nice and that you guys are continuing conversations on. yeah no thank you I, I often like i i always feel like the doom and gloom girl so i like having these conversations about like what is the reality of our situation today there's a reality that is a doom and gloom at the yeah. moment but that doesn't mean it has to be forever if we yeah. don't start talking about it and we don't start learning yeah then it becomes a doom and gloom yeah. it will because you're just ignorant to it. But if we talk yeah. about it, this is good. You got just a lot of super positive things can come out of this. I, I, yeah. I think there's, um, and I think that you are part of a handful, you know, we've, we've met a few brands, there, There's a, but there's a handful that are starting to really like kind of zero in on, you know, doing things local and, and kind of keeping things local. You're one of them. Um, the made local folks that make the mm -hmm. bars in Nova yeah. Scotia. She talks about, you know, like knowing everybody in her chain and then like being connected to local aviaries and all these, you know, sort of folks. So, um, you know, so we're starting to hear it, but there's um, kind of a, a small few of you that are really. You just need you know, to keep pushing it because that. we need more yeah. of us to understand it and support it. We may never build our own aviaries. We're not going to get our own farms. But you don't for crying out loud, we better yeah. start supporting our 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 yeah our, yeah, our yeah, farmers in our country. Like we, yeah. this is ours. Yeah. But it's, also even just job-wise moving into all of it. Yes. manufacturing. Like there's yeah. so yeah. many opportunities for careers in this space. Yeah. So, you, know, you don't have to be a farmer. You can be, just be part of the supply chain. Part of it. Yeah. 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 To get us to teach yeah. us all how to get things to shelf easier. Yeah. We found out we're not we're broken in a lot of spots, yeah. all fixable. Yeah. But we just need and, not to get fixing it. Yeah. yeah. And what we found out through that was every piece of the supply chain is just as important. It's as critical. Yeah. One, right. Yeah, like yeah. those truck drivers, they're pretty damn important. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We don't have we any all of a sudden. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even when we're making our product, we right. can have our chickpeas and we can have our sunflower oil and our seasoning. But if I don't have a box to put it in, I can't oh, get it to shelf. Exactly. Right? There's nothing so, you can do with it. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. component is just yeah. as important as the next. Absolutely. Yeah. You're very uh, cool. Amazing. I'm glad you came on. Thank yes. you. Oh, yes, well, thank yes. you for having me. I yeah. certainly appreciate it. Love these conversations. Well, that was really neat. I'm if like, uh, if people want to find you, not to ask you for wheat or anything <laughs> that's shortage wise. Well, Phil and I might. Maybe you some are not allowed to call Natasha and ask her for something that we're short on shelves. Um, Unless but, it's my product, then I want to hear. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, yeah, different. Yeah. That's a yeah. whole different no, story. No, then you go to the website and order it. And then yes, exactly. you yeah. don't have any problems there, but, um, is there somewhere like, it's really good to find you? Uh, yeah, through my LinkedIn, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not super active with posting on LinkedIn, but I certainly check my messages and I'm awesome. scrolling through. And then of course, through the website as well. So yeah. I'm yeah. an active team. We'll, here we'll put both links in the episode notes. Um, we look forward to watching you grow and expand and, and we love what you're doing. If you ever have new news and you want to, be able to share it just ping us and absolutely got an open invite to come back on go anytime. canada man we're all yeah. over i love i love if this you, i love and it if, if you see an emerging <clears throat> issue you want to talk about uh we love these conversations and, yeah. and you know so we'd love to have you back anytime you want
Okay, that sounds great. Well, maybe you guys will be first on my list for this for the farm tours. There we go. Oh, I'd love to do a farm Ooh, tour. Oh, we'd be okay, in. I'll, you I'll you know, so one of those things that's on our list, we're sorting out some of these things is we'd love to be able to do some videos of businesses that we love, right? So we're mm -hmm. we've got a list of them. You've already you don't know totally. it because it's in my head, but it's already you're already <laughs> on the list. But a farm, a videoed farm tour would be amazing. We'd like to actually go. We'd love to go across the country if we could. Yeah, That's and amazing. actually film people like yeah. you and talk about it yeah. to actually show more Canadians that yep. listen. We got our. We we do have a lot of really cool people in this yep. country. Yeah, like we can do shit. Yeah, if, if we want to, we don't want we to. Have That's amazing fine, shit, not do we shit. Do we have amazing like, we shit. Cool shit, like, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I think that's an awesome idea. So many yeah. stories like untold, right? So there's yeah. awesome stories, right? right? Yeah. Well, sign us up. That's great. And I'll make a note yeah. because uh, once this facility opens, it'll just make Let it us know. I'd love to have you back on. Here where you're going, what's going yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Trials and tribulations, always both, because I think, you know, we have listeners that are trying to get in this space. And I think they need to hear from people like you that yep. have had the experience and, you know, they yep. have to understand it's not, it's not a given. You're not going to go from zero to hundred million. It yeah. just doesn't happen. Yeah. It's a, or if it does, it's very few and far between, obviously. Yeah, for sure. It's a grind. That was awesome. awesome. All right. Thanks, well, Natasha. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate Thanks. it. Have a good I'll day. Take care. Thanks, you Bye. too. Phil, Bye. stick around. Yeah. That was very cool, man. She's cool. You know what it is, too? It's just, it's just I just love the, mm -hmm. I, I don't think, I guess, public, I, I like, I like, I like the um, generational plays mm -hmm. too right mm -hmm. like i mean I, I, you know the, the the folks farm and then you know one goes into culinary and one goes into business and they end up back on the farm and they kind of and i love this fact that we're actually you know producing processing and producing you know here and not doing what we typically do with almost all our resources which ship them out and then buy them back processed right i mean that's what canadians have always done yeah i mean our country's sort of based on that we're great at shipping shit out and bringing it back. Yeah. Finished, I know. Right. I know. Why do that? I know. It's, right? uh, but it's, it's super cool. What I think you maybe need to be a farmer though, too. They're ballsy, right? I mean, farming is, is you're already a different person because you really, what, what control do you have over the weather, which is the main component? You got zero. No, but right? the, yeah, it's just the skill set, right? Like, I mean, they all understand the, the automation and all that stuff and all the new technology that's coming out. And then they got this ancient technology, right? Like really in the video, the one of the founding farmers, he like he scoops soil. So I get it's for video and everything, but he scoops soil and he's like, yeah, you know, it's cold, but there's still a lot of active. You can smell it. I'm like, I, well, I guess maybe you can though, but you get to know that, right? And then I know what know, I'm smelling. I don't know what I'm, you know, like it's amazing, right? So yeah, to me, I think the whole it's all, I think it's all really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all really cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that she came on. That was really interesting. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I enjoy really that. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, thanks for listening, folks. Uh, Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Okay.